Absolutely brilliant. Well done, Capacity Crowd. Oh, in fine spirits after a good win against Stoke at the weekend. Oh, fantastic. Welcome to Life's a Pitch TV, episode five of Life's a Pitch TV. I'm Mark Murphy, and if you're watching on YouTube, hello, great to have your company. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel, please. It will help us keep it going and keep it going forward. Uh, thanks to DPS Tech, our main sponsor, for helping us make the show happen. And a massive thank you to our other sponsors for making the show what it is. All about hearing Green King, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, and we have a new sponsor, Ginger Pickle, who are a marketing company. And thank you to Tony Southgate, whose company is based in Norwich. Give our sponsors a big round of applause. Fantastic stuff. And if you'd like to get involved and sponsor the show or get involved in any way, you can email lifesapitchtv at gmail.com, lifesapitchtv at gmail.com. Let me introduce you to the team, and it's a full squad. Nobody on the missing list this week. First of all, let me introduce you to former Ipswich and England skipper. It's only Terry Butcher, everybody. Yay! And I'm thrilled to say he was replaced last week by Ted Lasso. But this week, we have managed to link up live to Australia. Please give a big welcome to Russell Osman. Hi, everybody. <laughs> well done, Russ. Thanks for having me. I've not been here for the previous few weeks. Oh, we've missed you. We've missed you. But we've got you through the wonders of technology now, which is amazing. Uh, also with us from behind BT's Bar from TWTD.co.uk, it's Phil Ham, everybody. Yay! Hello. And Ted Lasso's here as well again tonight. I know, sneaking over my yeah, shoulder. Yeah, he, he was sitting in for Russell last week, but he's keeping you company uh, here tonight. Uh, big shout out also to John Parker, Richard Garrett and Mark Calver, who are on technicals over there. Thank you. Hey. And well done, Capacity Crowd, for making it here this evening. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Hey. Um, now, if you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does make a difference to us going forward. So far, the channel, and we've only been going, what, a few weeks, uh, views at the moment, 42,387, which is phenomenal, Butch. Uh, 3,794 subscribers, but wouldn't it be nice to get to 5,000 tonight? So if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Don't worry, you won't get spam mails or anything like that. It just helps us uh, with the channel. But a, a great bunch of people watching and listening. Yeah, fantastic. I don't know why they like it, to be honest, but uh, you know, they, they obviously do. But we're doing something right, Mark, which is unusual. Well, Did... we come out at 9 o'clock at night, so everybody's had a beer by then, so yeah. it helps. Yeah. Do you say ginger pickle? Ginger new, Pickle. That's yeah. not Ed Sheeran's company at all, is it? No, I don't think so. No. It's, it's not his new song that's coming out? No, I don't think so. No, but it comes from Norwich. <laughs> yeah. And it's, Don't boo the man. He's sponsoring no, no, us. You cannot, boo the, you cannot boo the sponsors. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, no, you can't. I, I think that might end up being on your shirt. It's either on your shirt or Russell's. It's not green and yellow. No, it? it will never be that. Okay. It will never be that. Tony's a good boy. He's a good lad. Um, every week we have a special Ipswich Town guest, and we'll introduce you to this week's guest in a moment or two. But a fantastic response, Phil, to last week's show with George Burley and uh, and your Keep It Up Challenge efforts last week. Didn't he do well, everybody? No. No, no it's not getting any better, I'm trying it? to whip it up for you. <laughs> no, I think trying it's... Trying to yeah. get it going. Uh, great response to last week's show. Uh, lots of lovely comments. Another fabulous episode with another Ipswich legend. Keep up the great work, everyone involved. Great idea this show is. Loving it. Uh, Norman says, last week's episode with George Burley was brilliant. I followed him as a player and a manager. So many memories. I met him and Sir Bobby Robson when they came to visit us in George's testimonial year near to Northampton. Uh, such wonderful people. Now I can keep in touch all the way from Thailand, which is fantastic. And we've got someone here who watches in Spain. Hey! hey. hey. All over the world. Uh, a true town legend in life's a pitch uh, to bring us Mr. Burley. You spoil us. And also another one here, brilliant show again. You guys are doing an amazingly good job. Love it and uh, thank you. So uh, we've also got a website coming as well. Did you know this? I don't know anything, Mark, no. Um, <laughs> did we not run this one past you? No. Did you I know this, Phil? It. Vaguely, yeah. Oh, vaguely, yeah. So we're going to have a website coming very soon, which is going to have an opportunity because lots of people want, want our shirts, particularly yours. Oh, it's really? very popular. So I, we're gonna I like do, mine. We're no? going to do some mugs and some shirts and things yeah, like that it's, very it's soon. It's very good. So, it's very nice. It's a very nice shirt. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, mugs and shirts. You'd all buy those, wouldn't you, souvenirs? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we've taken your name and your numbers. <laughs> um, now, 
the good thing about this is that you never know who's watching or listening. And the other day, we were talking about the insurance company that used to run back in the day. What was the slogan, Phil? Yeah. Number six for England, number one for insurance. There we go. And Did you think of that, Terry? Did you think of that? Well, I've ever had a message from someone who, who calls you Uncle Terry. Yeah, uh, I, know, I know who it is, yeah. Nina's been in touch, and she says, good old Uncle Terry. Uh, and she sent me some PR pictures of you and your insurance company back in the day. And she says her and the whole family covered half of Lowestoft with these pictures, putting them through people's doors, and she still hasn't been paid. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interest on that then, I so, reckon. So, yeah, but I mean, she just volunteered, so you don't she? get paid, no. It's not what she's saying to me, Butch. Well, she should have read her contract, really, didn't she? <laughs> read the small print. Naughty Nina. Uncle Terry, hey? <laughs> oh, child well, when, well, labour. When you've got a business, you've got to become a businessman, haven't you? You've got to be ruthless. You've got to be ruthless. Very hard, no. And Very anyway, hard. enough of this. Let's bring in... Our special guest this week, we are absolutely thrilled. He's made so many appearances for Ipswich Town. It's only Mickey Stockwell, everybody! Long time since I heard that. Well got, done, well now. done, well done. Uh, great song, and lovely to hear that again, isn't it? Yeah, great, nice. Yeah, I don't know if it's deserved, but it's of nice. It <laughs> of course it is. Oh, of course it is. I mean, we I didn't rehearse it before you came in, but, yeah. you know. No, we're better in rehearsal. <laughs> 557 starts, 53 sub-appearances, 44 goals. I think it's definitely worth it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. What, is it, what is it like when you're hearing a, a positive song like that when you're playing on the pitch? Yeah, it's great. I mean, you hear it when you're doing well, and you hear other stuff when you're not doing quite <laughs> so well. <laughs> but um, yeah, at one point, I had Jesus as a nickname. That was quite oh, yeah. hard to get up right. and uh, go higher than that. So everything was down from there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. You know, I've always had fantastic support from from Ipswich Town supporters, um, and uh, yeah, it's been it was really my team for a long time, and. Uh, Enjoyed every moment of it, really. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of them have been in touch with us, and we'll do some of those um, mentions a little bit later on in the show. Um, but we've got to start by uh, talking about Town's victory at the weekend. Yay! Yay! Big crowd, Phil Ham, wasn't it? 29,006, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I think second highest. Second highest in to the Southampton, championship I think. to Southampton. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, particularly normally the first game of the season, you guys will know this as well. Um, a lot of people are on holiday, aren't they? So the attendance for the first game is normally not that great. But to to pack out the crowd was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, I don't think it's going to be much different for most of the games. Certainly, yeah. uh, certainly early on. Um, obviously, there's a massive uh, season ticket um, take up this year. You've got your away supporters, and then there's going to be. A scramble for the for the spare ticket, so it, it, it's quite tough getting a ticket at the moment. Just like the old days. Well, I can remember playing Premier League with a few spaces in the crowd. It, but when you're doing, I mean, the club's doing so well, isn't yeah. it? There's so much enthusiasm for everything. The team, the the way that the the new owners are projecting the club and pushing it forward. But um, I just think that at the moment the club's on such a high. It's, it's fantastic, uh, isn't it? It oh, is it's brilliant. Great. It's lovely because, yeah. you know, we've had a few tough years, haven't we? Just coming a few. Up to it. <laughs> um, being polite, yeah. And it's nice to just see it all, you know, I'm I'm lucky enough that when I'm at work, I'm in people and they can't stop talking about Ipswich Town and what's going on and, and asking questions. And that's great. Yeah. I love it. We've got a few questions about your current role um, working in people's homes a little bit later on. Okay. Um, don't worry about them. They're fine. <laughs> everybody, Not complaints. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's very satisfied with your workmanship, Mick. Thank you, um, thank you. Terry, what did you make of the atmosphere, first of all, on Saturday? No, that was terrific. It was really good. I, did, I never felt worried in the game whatsoever. I think, or did all the town fans think that? Never felt yeah. worried at all. Even when it's just 1 0, you sort of thought, well, they're dominating, and it's just only 1 0. Got to get that second goal. Um, so it, I just thought the way they approached it, they're playing a different way, slightly different way in the first game and, and obviously on Saturday as well because they've they've been well warned they've been well drilled you know you've got to say you've got to admire Kieran McKenna because he's pr uh, prepared the players very well to play a different way but now they have a lot of strings to their bow because they, they can do different things at different times when they need to drop off they drop off but when they regroup they can break very very well so 
it's just exciting to watch. It really is. And I was I was in London yet, uh, the other day, and people are saying actually talking about Ipswich. They're doing really well. And top of the league now. You know, it's the, the the glory days are back. I think that deserves a song. That mention of top of the league, doesn't it? <laughs> we, we are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. That was we all. Are <laughs> top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Couldn't <laughs> start them now. Can't shut them out. <laughs> That was almost spontaneous. Well done. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Almost. Eventually. <laughs> uh, Russell, you're, you're obviously in Australia. Is word reaching you about Tan's performances? I've seen the performances and uh, been very impressive, Mark. Uh, nearly as impressive as I was when I was watching Mickey Stockwell play in, uh, in the Premier League as he just slipped in there. Was that the year you got um, Player of the Year as well, Mick? I did, yeah. I got I got player of the year in the Premier yeah. League, yeah. Premier League, yeah. yeah I did. All right, congratulations, well Long time ago, well. Russ. Long time. <laughs> it's a, it's a distant, so come on. distant memory. Yeah. It's a Premier League player, pal. Simple as that. But I think Town have been doing fantastically well. Um, I agree with what Terry said. They look very comfortable in the the last game against Stoke. I thought they might miss uh, Christian Walton a little bit more um, in goal, but. Uh, they haven't. They've looked very comfortable at the back. Um, they've carried on playing out from the back. They've played some very good football. And um, it's all there in front of them for the rest of the season. They look a very professional outfit at the moment. We've all given our predictions, and I went for um, top two in my prediction. I think we're going to do um, promotion again this season. Where, where, where do you think, Russell? Have you, we haven't had your prediction for the season yet. I would think playoffs. Providing they don't get uh, any bad injuries or anything like that, if they get a, a fair slice of luck, which everybody needs to be successful in any league campaign, then um, I could comfortably see them being in the playoffs at least, yeah. Good to see. I, I'm still going for top two. Phil, uh, your assessment on Saturday? It was a great, uh, great crowd, great game, wasn't it? Everybody went home buzzing. Yes, and I think that... Um just the way we came up against a side like Stoke, who are an established championship side, um, brought in a lot of players over the summer as well to strengthen. Um, Kieran McKenna in his pre-match press conference said he expects them to be contenders. Well, I expect them to be probably there or thereabouts of the playoffs rather than top two. Um, but really, as Terry said, there was never a real question that we were going to win, really. Once we scored the first goal, it was a case of when we get the second goal. And, of course, we got a very well-worked second goal, didn't we? Um, first goal, of course, one that Terry would have been proud of, I'm sure, the Luke Wolfenden's uh, towering header, the sort of goal that you used to score every now and then and, and uh, Russell used to score every now and then. Well, I wouldn't say it was a towering Thanks, header from, from Luke Wolf Wolfenden, but it was a... It was on target and he scored. I don't know what they, <laughs> their goalkeeper was doing. He had a nightmare. So he half came and then he yeah, didn't he did really he make a decision, and, did he? You know, it doesn't matter if you know how you score it as long as it as long as it goes in. Russell scored plenty of goals like that, so he's, <laughs> he, he scored far more than me anyway. <laughs> but it was it was a traditional centre halves goal, wasn't it? And then the second one, I think, was such a, a nicely worked move from the goalkeeper down the left through the middle, and then uh, and then a lovely ball from Wes Burns for. For Caden Jackson, I was so pleased for Caden Jackson to get that. Actually, I I really think he gets a, a a lot of stick actually, and McKenna obviously sees something in him, and and for him to get that goal, I think we'll see a little more of him this season. Well, he couldn't miss, could he? Let's be honest. Well, even about so, it. you still got to get it. You could have scored that. Mark. I couldn't have scored that. Mm, really? I, I had one chance of scoring at Portman Road once in a charity match. Laurie Civil was in goal. Big Laurie Civil. I had a penalty to take. I ran as fast as I could. I hit the ball as hard as I could, and I hit the post. So. <laughs> You know, and Laurie was about this big in the goal. Well, Laurie yeah. was a fantastic goalkeeper, yeah. wasn't he? If he'd have been six foot six, he'd have played for England, wouldn't he? As a goalkeeper, he was yeah, and he technically was, he was brave, brave as well because yeah, he, he had his face kicked in by Andy Gray. And did I tell you the story about with his um, with his tonsils when he uh, every time there was the first test at Lords of the cricket season, he used to skip work and go down in someone's car, duck down when he went through Ipswich, and popped up again when he came out of Ipswich, went down to Lords. Watched the cricket because he loves cricket, and then came back home and he was in. But he he phoned up Bobby to say, oh, "I've got a croaky voice. I really got a croaky voice. <laughs> I think it's me tonsils." So, so this happened a couple of years, and then Bobby organised and told Laurie, "By the way, you've got a, um, an operation um, next week <laughs> in the hospital to remove your tonsils because you're, you're missing too many games." <laughs> so he had to have his tonsils out, and there's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're going to get him on the show. We've got to get him on the show one of these weeks. Well, it's we? a bit like Mick, really. You need a bit of a cushion and a bit of a. Yeah, yeah. I thought you got a, a cushion out for him. He, he, he did. Well, no, yeah. he actually had a booster seat for yeah. me, to be fair. <laughs> so I thought his feet could yeah. get away with I that. Thought, yeah. I thought yeah. his feet would be swinging on the floor. No, come on. I'm actually, <laughs> but he's, he it's may the be, only set here I can actually touch the floor. I'm actually quite. <laughs> he, may, he may be little, but he's got a very big heart. I tell he you, he has that. indeed. He very has indeed. Yeah, well, Wonder what he's going to say there. But <laughs> 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 we mentioned Bobby Robson, of course. Uh, you actually you span the years, don't you? Because you started out of Switch when B- Bobby Robson was manager. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough um, to make my debut playing alongside this fella, um, and then went right way through to 2000 and Wembley was the last involvement I had with the club. I unfortunately wasn't on the bench that day, but yeah, so spanned quite a long, a long time and uh, see, saw a few different things and change in the game and everything else. Because when you first came to the club, you know, and, and, and made your debut and everything else, we were on a bit of a downward trend and then we got relegated. And then, I mean, and then four years later, well, no, six years later, we get promotion. Yeah. And then a few years later, we get relegated. Yeah. And then we get promotion again. So it was a bit of a yeah, uh, it, up and down, wasn't it? It was. Um, obviously, when Sir Bobby left, and you know that better than me, but there was quite a few top players who left at the straight away almost, didn't they, um, after that? Uh, which give uh, an opportunity for myself and others coming in. But there was always opportunities at the club for young players, just probably a few more at that point because uh, a few top players had left. But, yeah, it was, I mean, it was tough at the first bit. Um, you know, we were, weren't going great in what would have been the old first division, which is premiership now. Um, but I enjoyed it. Um, it was tough. I I wasn't Bobby Ferguson's favourite when I got in the team. <laughs> not many were. Not many were. Well, was that because you were a son? That was quite. I mean, I I have to be honest. It wasn't really until uh, John Lyle joined the club that I actually felt like, you know, somebody really believed in me and appreciated me. And I think my game went up a few levels after that. And, we should uh, all appreciate John Lyle a whole lot more than than he doesn't get the same kind of level of. Um, acknowledgement as a great town manager and he was when he was here wasn't he oh i mean unfortunately i i didn't get to play under sir bobby but i i imagine the respect that he had from the players the fact that people were prepared to run through brick walls for him he made people believe in themselves and uh he for me he was he was a brilliant manager and um we were at a, a low point. John Duncan had just got the sack from the club and we were like bottom half of the championship as it was then. Um, John came in, totally changed everything we did, how we looked at the game. One year of his coaching and we we won the uh, what would be the championship now to go into the first Premier League. And at that time, that was when Blackburn had just started to get all the the money from Jack Walker bringing in all the players and we actually beat them quite easily and comfortably to the title so and we had a good side at the time it was a team that could score goals it reminds me a little bit of of where we are at the moment a team that could score goals going into a higher level on used to winning games full of confidence looking around the dressing room believing in people and I think that's where the lads are now even though they've gone up a level, they still believe in what they're doing and um, full of confidence, believe they're going to win and you can see it on the pitch. I mean, that is so important, isn't it? That team spirit and working together. And we see that. I mentioned it last week. You know, we see it so much now. Saw it in your era. We saw it in George's time when he took us up in 2000 as well. Um, when you have that working together like that and the team are bonded, I mean, that's when the magic happens, isn't it? Yep, it is. It, 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 I mean, you have to have self-belief. You can't go out onto that pitch without having total belief in yourself. If you have self-doubts, you, you'll get found out. So that little bit of arrogance when you go out on the pitch is is needed. Um, you don't have to be arrogant when you come off the pitch, but you do have to have some when you're when you're on it. Um, and and if you've got good players around you and and like you say, you're moulded and you're going into training, you're enjoying training, training's interesting, which I believe, you know, the players love what Kieran does and it's got, there's like 
spider cams and all sort of things going on now. A bit like in your day, Butch, when that spider cams watching your train and stuff like that. Well, only only spiders watch that train, <laughs> I tell you. There's no cams only, anywhere. Uh, only spiders in the dressing room no. back then. No, but but when, yeah. but when, what did you see yourself as a, when you were young? Did you see yourself as a right back? Uh, a central midfield player or a right midfield player? When you, when, I mean, you played in every position for town apart from the goalkeeper. So what was your fa- well, what was your favourite position? Um, I suppose, realistically, like that year in the Premier League, I had the, the best season at the highest level playing fullback. Um, but I enjoyed playing midfield. I had a few games as striker. I scored two against Wimbledon in the Premier League and played fullback the next week. Um, <laughs> and you scored two against Leicester, didn't you? As I scored well? two at Leicester, yeah. Um, and it was nice in a way because John had that confidence in me, and that's what I was saying. But he would do that, and then you know, someone who was obviously injured because he wouldn't play me striker unless someone was injured. <laughs> would get fit and, and, and then I'd go play somewhere else. He even started me at centre-half at oh, Leeds. I was just going to ask that. I mean, how, how, how tall are you? Uh, not that tall. Five, <laughs> six. <laughs> five, six. Yeah, we had a master plan. I mean, we did, we did play some, some crazy schemes at times in the Premier League, especially away from home, um, to try and mess the opposition up. And, um, we, we started at um, uh, Ellen Road against Leeds, who were the old champions first division champions when they went into the pre- when the premier league started and um for some reason and I, I still try and work it out 30 years later but john played me at center half and tried to mark gary McAllister man for man with eddie yelts well i had a broken like that with big um brian dean was the center forward it was a big lump about a foot and a half taller than me which isn't tough but uh <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we we soon changed around. I think we lost 1-0 that day. But, you know, we, we did come up, you know, we went to Man United, drew 1-1, 0-0. One, one, nil, nil. I mean, at one point, Fergie had um, steam coming out of his ears, going bright red, because we, um, we were the most boring 0-0 nil, nil draw. Ever. But we got a 0-0 nil, nil at Man United when they were flying. You know, and, that, that, and we didn't train all week doing it. He would literally, John would trust the players on a flip chart in the team meeting and with tea and toast or whatever it was in the hotel and we went out and did it and great times lovely you haven't mentioned the the, the greatest goal in premier league history have you the, uh, on my 23rd birthday i looked it up actually uh, monday night football live on sky at wimbledon. all right wimbledon mm. yeah a uh, few fans have flagged this up actually and, and posted it up on our twitter feed yeah, no, it was a nice one. Um, not often you can say you scored a goal from starting in your own half. Um, I just, to be fair, I had no no idea where I was going. I just ended up. <laughs> That's ended what up, I thought as well. <laughs> <laughs> just ended up in that place. Up. Do you on, know? Man. Yeah, but Hans Sagers actually went to court for that, didn't they? Because <laughs> him and Bruce Godbilla were up on a charge for um, <laughs> deliberately letting in goals. I, I think they, found not guilty. They, yeah, in case I, 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 <laughs> I didn't think noise. he stood a chance with no. it. To be fair, but um, yeah, I, think I, I actually watched off. it as well. I got on YouTube. Because uh, yeah. I, I was I was a bit influenced by the word Maradona, and I'm thinking, <laughs> did he punch it in or something like that? <laughs> that was about the only but thing I'd ever get close to Maradona. Right? Yeah, but, but no, uh, it, but it was it was scintillating, so wasn't it? It was unbelievable. I mean, that's you know, yeah, I, you, yeah. Sometimes it's just spontaneous. You, yeah, you know, a door or a, a gap opens, and boom, you're, you're in there, and, you, and you, you got into the box. They couldn't touch you when you were in the box. No, nah. it was a great finish as well uh, for a right in, back. It was brilliant. And in fairness, as a player, I was quite a deep thinker about how I tried to structure my game and go about things and, and, and try to get the best out of myself. But sometimes you just, you know, natural, whatever, the, in the spur of the moment and whatever you're running and you're doing, you beat one person and something, it, somebody else comes in and, you, and, and then just uh, your natural instincts take over. And then in that situation, that was totally that. So Let's bring Russ back in again. Uh, Russ, would you have liked to have partnered uh, in central defence against you know, with the five foot six Mick Stockwell? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, even Walker, he used to get so angry because my game was about, you know, energy and getting up the pitch and crosses and Walker would always be going, hey, get back, get back, get back. Yeah. So, Are you sure that's what you, he was saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it, in Scottish, you couldn't yeah, understand yeah, yeah, him. That was my excuse because I kept going. So, Sorry, Russ, do you want to come in there? 
Yeah, do you defend your back post well, Mick, as well? You know, using all that height to clear those uh, crossfield passes that come looping over there? Well, in in those days, there wasn't television cameras everywhere, Russ, was there? So I was able to stand on the big fella's foot or just hold him for a little <laughs> while. Because obviously the referee would always be watching when the other guy was, when the guy who was delivering the ball was yeah. about to kick it. So you had a little opportunity just to try and upset him. I wasn't going to win the ball, but as long as he didn't get a great header, then I was happy. Whereas now, that's a bit harder, isn't it? Because they got cameras everywhere. Yeah, I think you learned that from us, to be honest, because we all tried that as well. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah. It worked a treat, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. You've got to put somebody off. You have to put them off. You, I mean, the just enough. You don't want to do it long enough so that you're going to give a penalty away or anything like that. I mean, I can't believe the amount of grappling that goes on in a box from a corner now. We wouldn't have got away with that, I don't think. Would we, we wouldn't have done it. I we mean, wouldn't have done it, no. Bobby Ferguson used to say, if you do that, Butcher, I'll break your arm. <laughs> <laughs> and he would. Yeah, he would, he yeah. Why allow it? I don't... Why, do, why does the referee go in there at every corner and say, listen, lads, don't do this, don't do that, don't do whatever. Let them take the corner, and as soon as he sees an infringement blow the whistle for the infringement, and it's either a penalty or a free kick for the defensive team. Well, I, think, I, I think they do blow the whistle for the, if it's an offensive foul. They're quite happy to blow the whistle if it's an offensive foul. They just don't want to give a penalty, do they? Yeah, you know, that, that's uh, they've got a tough job, haven't they? I, um, I, I, I no. was never the I was never the big <laughs> I was never the biggest fan of referees. I don't think. You I, know. I think in the room there is a qualified young referee somewhere who's just hiding we might get a word with him a bit later on so just be careful there is a ref in the room boys yeah um, I, that, that won't alter anything Mark don't be silly <laughs> <laughs> that's so ridiculous I, I mean I, I'll probably get in trouble but with VAR you still got the same guys looking at it haven't you so you know it, I just think there needs to be more of an understanding of football from the referees I mean the fallout rate in um in, in academies from young lads who, who are trying to make it but don't. If there was an academy for them to go into after football where they could play a bit of semi-pro football, referee a game the next week with the knowledge of from eight years old to 16, 18 or whatever they've gathered, there must be a place to try and to raise the bar of football knowledge. I mean, in the referees, that's just for me. Yeah, it's a really good idea, really good idea. You, you're... You were known for bombing up and down, you know, your energy levels. Absolutely huge. I mean, is that natural ability? Well, I suppose so. Um, I, I never, in, in pre-season or, or any day, I never really enjoyed running. Uh, put a ball down, I'm a bit like a dog, I chase a ball anywhere. But, uh, and, uh, well, we'll find out with the Keep It Up <laughs> Challenge later, actually. <laughs> that, that is scaring me more than anything, playing in front of however many people. Our capacity I, I, crowds! Yeah, Yay! absolutely. I haven't, I haven't kicked the ball for years, so keeping it up. Phil Ham could... could. You're not be, telling me that he could be higher on the leaderboard than you, He could be higher okay. on the right. leaderboard. Okay. Okay. I've noticed that yeah. George got an ad didn't have to do he it. He got a pass, He yeah. got a pass. That's yeah. a bit poor yeah. form. And Cole Skew's got a pass. If you'd have come in with a fake plaster on your leg, then you might have got a pass. Are you trying to say Cole Skew's had a fake plaster on his no, leg? No, 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 <laughs> not at all, no. Um, but certainly, that you know, you, you were known very much for that energy bombing up and down uh, up and down the field, which was great to see. Yeah, great to see you on the ball. And, um, you know, that was that was a real key part of your, your game, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and when I... You know, I've stopped working at the academy now. But when I was talking to you, I think you you have to work on your strengths. You know, people talk about working on your weaknesses. But if your strengths running, time your runs better. Know when to when to and where to run. You know, mm. and 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 what at the end of it, just waste of time running sixty yards at a sprint if you can't chip the ball into the right area or pick out the right pass at, at the end of it, isn't it? So just becoming better at the good things you do gives you more chance of getting a contract and working on your weaknesses in my opinion yeah well someone asked Connor Chaplin on our first show you know again you know when he chips the ball into the goal is that natural ability he said no I work at it I work at it all of the course. while I work at it work at it good players work at that you know David Beckham was a great crosser great striker of a free kick 
you hit hundreds of crosses in training and hundreds of free kicks. It's it's no example. Um, no, you know this guy was a fantastic head, and I hate to think how many brain cells that guy's uh, damaged in in his training career. Head in it, you well, we'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another five years and ask that question again. <laughs> Oh dear! Right, I'll tell you what. Actually, because we've we've kind of reached a a moment, really, I think here, where it's probably you want to relax and enjoy the rest of the evening, don't you? Well, you I'm, really... I'm, I'm okay at the moment. I'm relaxed. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I I think it's probably time for the um, what is it? The keep it up challenge. Oh, dear, oh dear, this could be scary. <laughs> Right, it is the Keep It Up Challenge. So, Mick, we've got a ball here, okay? Um, just move my beer out of the way, oh, purely dear. to keep my vocal cords going. Um, so this is the latest Umbro ball bought by my own fair hand at Ipswich Town. It's even still got the sticker on, I think. Yeah, 25 quid, that. Okay, so there is our Keep It Up Challenge area over there. Would you like to go into the performance area? Give them a round of applause, everybody. Give them some encouragement. So... <laughs> Unfortunately, we forgot to mention to Mick that he had to do this tonight. So, um, he's a bit rusty. So, we've got our Keep It Up Challenge leaderboard. Uh, Phil, can you run us through that leaderboard? Can you see it from where you are, Phil? I can. Um, Luke, well, the bottom of the table, I can't quite read who Phil that Hamm. is on six. Six. Um, and then Connor Chaplin on 52, and Luke Chambers currently topping the table on 59. 59, yeah. So, how it works. <laughs> six is away yeah, away to be fair I tripped over the ball to get that six <laughs> <laughs> so you've got you've got 60 seconds Mick we're going to we're going to say you know once we start we start and it's how many you do in that first bit and then um, so play to the whistle okay uh, Butch has got the timer <laughs> uh, are we ready everybody Yay! and you're going to count for us as well aren't you capacity crowd yeah. Butch are you ready with the 60 second timer Yes. Okay, Phil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Dumb. nine, ten, eleven. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well done. Eleven puts you into a very respectable third place on the leaderboard, Mick. Hey. Out of four. <laughs> I like the fact that someone's actually running stats on this, aren't they? They are, yes. Ipswich Town Data was yes. there. Sent us a tweet. Yeah, Have you got that? Uh, somewhere, yeah. Um, and it notable that I had no touches on my right foot, which is no surprise to anybody who's ever seen me play football. Uh, <laughs> They've actually, someone has actually taken time to analyse, slow mo, and analyse how many oh knees, dear. feet, elbows, <laughs> wall gets a mention as well, I think, doesn't it, Phil, somewhere? Yeah. Um, I've just found it. It's IT, ITFC da at ITFC Data. Yes, uh, football is now all about the data. So I've done your little keep it up challenge breakdown. Phil Ham leading the way on thigh touches. Can I oh. naturally go <laughs> on thigh touches? Oh, it's nothing to be proud of. No, I was going to say. You can this get is, arrested for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and knee touches. Um, and use of the wall. So, yes. Um, use of the wall gets a mention. But, but yeah. losing, losing out on all other fronts. So there you go. Um, yeah, so yes, you want to see that uh, uh, at. ITFC data on yep, Twitter. Yeah, look for that on Twitter and you can see how the uh, the stats compare on that. Well, how was that? Uh, well, that was quite stressful, I have to say. <laughs> you can but relax now. Yeah, at least I beat Phil. You yeah, did. If you I, did. It's great. You know, because there was a couple of lads who have already copped out, wasn't there? There was. So this is true. We should put them you know. on the yeah, bottom, you know. Zero, zero. Next to Cole and George, really. I, I think a big zero next yeah. to Cole and George. Yeah. I think you're right, yeah. We'll you're only, you're only trying to push yourself up the <laughs> table. <laughs> and that way I'll only be third from bottom. Well, did, not, did, not, did not run, did not take part. <laughs> no. like, no. That's all right. um, Phil, you've got some uh, Ipswich Town news in brief for us because now the season is kind of underway. We're going to uh, have a little news in brief. Uh, so, what are the stories you've picked out for us this week? Well, the obvious one is top of the league. Yeah. First. Yay! Yay! Top What's of the, the song. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Thank you. <laughs> and, and that's the first time top of the championship since Boxing Day 2014 when we won away at um, Brentford, didn't we? I do remember that. In a that, lunchtime yeah. kickoff. Four goals we scored. Four that two, I think Four it was. Two, yes, yeah. I think Daryl Murphy got a couple, didn't yeah. he? And uh, yeah, and and um, I think we actually were only top for a matter of hours that day. But I kind of think everyone did start to start to dream at that point in that season. Um, 
Carl Edwards on his way. Uh, I think we all kind of realised that when he wasn't in the the twenty man squad. Twenty man squads these days. Twenty man squad for the the Bristol Rovers match. Uh, and then Kieran McKenna later in the week kind of confirmed, yeah, he had a word with Carl Edwards and said, well, you know, he wants to play more regularly and I don't think he's going to play regularly here. What do we think? What do we think of that? Uh, I think it's perhaps inevitable that he was going to move on. Yeah, if, you, if you're not going to get regular games and you're not, you know, you're just coming off the bench and so forth and you've, you know, at that age as well and for his career, I think it's best to, to go uh, out on loan. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure there are plenty of clubs who would like, uh, like to take him. Mm-hmm. Mickey? He's, yeah, and, and to be fair, I think come towards the end of the transfer window they will try and bring in one or two if the, if the uh, right people become available on the right money that the club can afford so yeah I mean the best you've only got a limited time so you want to be playing if you can don't you definitely definitely and and on a similar note really um Kieran said that Cameron Humphreys is a bit of a dilemma there at the moment, where whether to keep him around the squad, because obviously he's a talented midfield player, and also he doesn't count towards the 25-man EFL squad because of his age. Um, but then do you send him out on loan to get games? Because I think he'll be a better player for, for playing regular games. Um, so I think, well, where, would, where, where do you chaps sit on that? I think they like Cameron a lot, hmm. and I think, um, I think he'll get his opportunities during the season. So I think they'll keep him here. I think possibly keep him here up until January, and then maybe if he's if he's not getting any game time, that's the that's the time to move him on. Mm. You know, for that for that six months. And Elkin Bagger is in a not dissimilar position, I would yeah, say. Same. I think, I think exactly the same. Yeah. What do you think as a centre half? What's your thoughts on Elkin Bagger? And no, I liked him. I was there with, with with when he was in the under 18s. Sweet left foot, good range of pass. Very similar to myself in terms of being very slow, but um, <laughs> apart from that, you know, he's he's got he's got the lot really. He's he's competitive. He's very comfortable on the ball. He's a, he's a good lad, and you know, you, you want him at your club because he's got about a million fans out in Indonesia on Twitter, I think, or something yeah. like that. And he's a good character as well, yeah. isn't he? I oh, think he's a lovely character. Yeah, Russell, lovely what, what what's your thoughts on uh, on Elkin Baggett? I like him. I like uh, the size of him. I think he's got good stature there. Um, obviously, if Terry's had anything to do with his uh, upbringing in his earlier years, then uh, he will be of sound character on the pitch. Um, it just needs to be around the club long enough to be able to make the, the most of an opportunity when it comes his way. You know, and it's a little bit the same for, for Cameron Humphreys. Lovely player, and I think if... Uh, uh, if Massimo gets a couple of injuries along along the way this season, I think Cam's still a great player just to be able to slide in there alongside Morsi. He knows what's expected of him now in the first team. He's had a little bit of experience in there, so he's uh, he's been able to to get used to things really in the way that uh, Keir McKenna likes to play. So I think both of them have got a big future at the club and I think they should be allowed to develop at the club. Yeah, some good points. Yeah, Phil, what else have you got for us? Uh, well, a record was equaled last weekend. Um, 20, 20 matches unbeaten in all competitions, town uh, currently, equaling a run or matching a run of 1980-81, which Russell and Terry were part of. But you, you're disputing this, aren't you, Terry? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the end of one season and the start of another. And it's in the third division, stroke second division. Whereas ours was at the top flight, so there's no way. I agree be- with you. There's Joe. no way it's better than us. No, <laughs> no way. way. No way. I don't I care if they get thirty. There's no way better than us. No, I, I think <laughs> most people would agree. I think I think Saint Etienne at home was one of the was, was the first one in that run. So uh, there's obviously some. I uh, think I can rather, hear Russell agreeing with Terry. Yeah. So Phil, I would back down. If rather, I was rather you, tough. And, there I two think. and and you. and and on a similar note, closing in on the 1979-80 23 match league unbeaten run, having. Got to twenty one, but as we've as we've as we've established, I think you have to just say. I mean, it's fantastic to do at the highest level like these guys did, but the run that the lads is on is fantastic, isn't it? And I'm I'm for one hope it keep, goes on for another forty games because yeah. uh, while it does, it's fantastic for everyone around, isn't it? Yeah, but there's no reason why they can't do it. To be honest, I mean, well, you know, look at who they've got yeah. coming up, QPR and coming up, the way that the way that they're Butch. playing and the way that the mood is in the camp and the confidence of the players. I mean, my God, it must yeah. be really sky high. QPR, easy, okay, three, well, three one. I'm not going to say easy because I don't I don't think there's any going to be any easy games in this league. But the the thing that's really impressed me is. 
last year, year we were having 60-70% possession, controlling games, creating lots of chances. This year, we, we're not going to have that. We're not going to have 60-70% possession, but we're still creating lots of chances. We're looking more dangerous up front and looking like scoring more goals from different areas than the teams that we've played so far. And for me, if you can score goals and, and create chances, then you're always in game. So, yeah, I, I think we're... We've got a great chance of doing well this year. Um, just got to keep going, game by game. Russ, Q- QPR next. I can't see us having a problem um, with QPR. Uh, I just think the, the vein of form we're in at the moment, the lads just can't wait for the next game to come along. Uh, and I thoroughly agree with Mickey. At the end of the day, if you're creating goal-scoring opportunities and you know that you've got people that can convert those opportunities into goals, then you go out and you're not worried about the game, you're not worried about the results, you're not worried if you go a goal behind, you always think that, yeah, we're going to get our our chances in front of goal and we're going to take them, you know, and I think at the moment they really do have that that sort of belief in the side that, um, yeah, they can win any game. They've Boom. got to play well, they've got to keep that belief, but they can do it. Yeah, I think QPR, I, I think their fans went into the season rather concerned that because they, they lost to one of their pre-season friendlies 5-0 to Oxford, and then the opening day of the season, they lost 4-0 at Watford. Um, but then they, they, I think he, uh, Gareth Ainsworth switched, switched his system last week, didn't he? And they won 2-1 at, at Cardiff, so they may have found something that works, but I just can't see us... Uh, going there and not winning, to be honest. Uh, I just think we're, as we, we say, the momentum is so, and, and the belief within the squad is so strong, I think we'll be too strong for them. I think they probably will be one of the teams that end up going down this season. OK, well, we'll see at the weekend, of course. Um, let's bring in some of our capacity crowd now, because uh, if you're at the ground on, on, on Saturday, oh, there's somebody else with a good record at the moment, actually. There's someone else with a 100% Ipswich Town record. Are you not, have you not mentioned that? No? No, you're all looking at me very blankly, aren't you? Well, the new stadium announcer who's been around. Oh, you know, I thought, this, I, thank you, I thought it might be this. For the last two games, you know, 100% record. <laughs> Six points. Well, a cup game, okay, and then three points. But yeah, 100% record for me. All right, you so you much. think this is all down to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to think I whipped the crowd into a bit of a frenzy, didn't I? Small sample package, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you do like a, a mark, apparently. <laughs> apparently, you do like a good whipping. I do, apparently, <laughs> yes, 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 well, let's not go there. Um, I want to bring in Richard Chandler now, because Richard was a guest at the uh, the game on uh, Saturday, and he walked 18 miles to the match on Saturday. Uh, he's stepping up to the microphone, just come a little bit closer to that microphone. G- gingerly Richard. stepping up to the microphone. Yeah, um, just, just tell everybody why you, you walked to the game on Saturday. Um, my sister passed away at the end of June, and we were massive Ipswich fans, season ticket holders for a lot of years back in Terry and Russell's day, then Mickey. So seen a lot of tough times over the last 15 years, obviously. Um, and she'd raised money for the foundation before. I wanted to ta- take that on. So I walked from my home in Colchester to the game on Saturday. And at the moment, it's just under £900 that I've raised. <laughs> Fantastic. And I interviewed you on the pitch uh, on Saturday and I, I watched you walk away and you kind of, I, I know it's that blue carpet, which is not easy to walk on around the pitch now, um, but, but you waddled off. How are you now? Uh, that was all about protecting the pitch, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, <laughs> it's, I'm loads better now. On Sunday, it was a different story. I got up Sunday morning and it wasn't a pleasant feeling. <laughs> I realised that I'm not 20 years old anymore and I'm 50 odd and maybe that wasn't the sensible thing to do without any training, but it is what it is. I won't be doing it again, that's for certain. <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'll top it up to a grand. Thank you. Hey, well done, Mark. Well done. Thank you very much. That's well much done. It means a lot. And what did you make of the game? I think it's fantastic. I, what I really, really struck me is that we're fitter than them. Both games, we've been fitter than established championship teams. And we were the fittest teams in League One. And McKenna said, yeah, it's going to be harder. All the pre-season was a harder pre-season. They're they're fitter than they've ever been. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I said before the season will come fifth. I think possibly second or third Thank you. I think that's where we're going to be, second. 
yes. Lots of nods. A few nods, anyway. I think, I think we've always been, as a, as a club, we've always been fit. I mean, the pre-seasons we did were pretty brutal. And I think the, all the players, Connor Chaplin sat there and said how hard it was. And I think that it sets your mind out to be tough. Um, if you've got a hard pre-season, if you're running hard and you, you're doing all the, the stomachs and press-ups and all the things that they do, you know, you, you, you're thinking, wow, this is, this is difficult. But it, it actually conditions your mind as well as your body to make you feel that, you know, we can overcome anything and we can go faster than, than, any, than anybody else. And I always fancy town now in the latter 15 minutes of a game to go and score, you know, a couple of goals because they have that strength within them. Where with teams are getting tired, Town looked very fresh. I mean, that's a real ace in the pack, that is, for, for Kieran McKenna and who the team. Who was it who got a lift back from running one day on the back of a milk float? Who was that? It was, it was a beat, wasn't it? Well, po- quite possibly. It's a yeah. Ted Phillips story, I think, like that yeah. as well. Yeah, there's, there's one or two yeah. stories around I'm sure, I'm sure Beat has done that as well. Because yeah. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't a good runner, Beat. He was a fast runner, but he wasn't a good... Yeah. He wasn't very, very What were good. your pre-seasons like, Mick? Tough. <laughs> but... Um, we didn't have the the scientific data like they we had. We didn't now. have anything. We big. didn't we have any know. data, no. So basically, you you would run until you were nearly ill, and then <laughs> they thought that was enough. <laughs> and uh, whereas now it's, it's much more scientific um, how, how things are done. Uh, yeah, I. It's preseason was one of those things that you had to get through, wasn't it? It yeah. was. We had, we had, it was scientific because they used to say. Run to that tree, run round it, and come back to that tree. Then run round it and go to the next tree. Well, they, I don't know what they would have done if there was no trees no in the trees. park. Yeah. Round. But you were pretty good at the cross country runs, I imagine, weren't you? I never your... enjoyed it, but I, 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 I would stick in there. I, I would, um, would stick in and go. But I, I was never at the front. I mean, someone like Chris Kuwami made it look easy. You know, he had no, he had no weight, no baggage, not like. And uh, he could run around and, and, and make it look dead easy. Kieran but Dyer was good at that, wasn't he? And yeah, Kieran Jamie Clapper, exactly I think. Exactly the same. Well, Kieran was one of the, you know, he could run for all day, couldn't he? Just what about you, Russ? Can you remember those days? <laughs> I can remember Russ. I, I remember, beat Russ. I remember the pre-seasons very well. But during the season was hard for us as well, Mark. You know, if we didn't have a midweek game, our normal week was very, very tough. You know, we'd do... Half laps, doggies, lapping, increase, decrease, cross country runs. So if we had a game on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, that was a blessing for us. <laughs> it was a lot easier for us to go Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday and keep playing two games a week. If we got a free week, we knew they were going to run the legs off us. And in those days, yes, we could play a bit and we could pass the ball well to each other. And we had a, a good team of talented players but we were fit as well so we would we could compete with people on the fitness level with the strength level as well as the technical stuff which you had to do you had to be able to compete on all all levels and the pitches in those days were diabolical um you know so you had to have to have some good miles in your legs all the time and it was tough i think a big difference as well was we didn't have big squads you know, Russell would have played a full season where he played every game. I played seasons where you played every game of the season. You, Butch would have been the same. And you just didn't have big squad where you could go, oh, it's Carabao Cup or League Cup. We're going to change everyone. Or, no, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't want to be changed, did no, we? No, I mean, we, we wanted to play, we, A, because we got more money when we played, didn't we, the way the contracts well, were. a little bit of money, yeah. <laughs> But, but, yeah, but you when, you, when you first came to the club, you were six foot four, but you ran so much, you know, five by six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've wrong. got some more questions from the crowd. Uh, Dan's here. Come on, Dan. Come now, on, Dan. Are we going to tell everybody who you really are? If you want to. <laughs> Dan, Dan is our original tractor boy from Life's a Pitch on BBC Radio Suffolk. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Dan's the man. And Dan was, I think you were about six when you first started reporting for us? Yeah, I was. I think I was, yeah, about six or seven. We were swapping 2006 World Cup stickers, we weren't were. we? That's so how it all began. Yes, that's what over it was. The fence. Yes. I haven't done a charity walk, though, sadly. I feel like a bit of a come down. No, after no, that. no, no, you're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, it means I haven't got to fork out any more money. Um, <laughs> yeah, do I get 100 quid as well? No, you don't. No, no, no. no. Don't speak. You're going to get that every week. Um, what do you want to say to Mick? I just wanted to ask, obviously this town team is very successful, but I wondered from your era, what one player do you think would improve this current team the most? Oh, crikey, good question. Crikey. Um, 
Mm. Take, take your time. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. Well, it's quite a big era he played, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of players. Was, oh, I played a long time. I mean, Butch would definitely <laughs> improve the team, wouldn't he? England captain, uh, Russell. I mean, w- we, I was lucky enough to be around, you know, three or four different sides, Ipswich different sides, that went through quite a big time from 1985 right the way to, to 2000. So it... it I don't want to say, you know, he would do it, but I, I, I think I, all I can say is that I really enjoy watching the team that's playing at the moment. Um, they're, they're brave, exciting. The football is, um, is productive, even though we say oh, they're passing out from the back. It's not that they're just passing for passing's sake. They're looking to draw people in. They're looking to break lines, get balls into the to the two tens we play in Chaplin and Broadhead. And we've got a lad up front who just is getting better. He works hard. He's strong. I mean, um, I, I think he we, the the style of young players that they brought in bodes well for the future I think there is room for one or two new players to come in but um, yeah there's a, there's a lot of players that I played with at a high level which I so I'm not going to say you know nine or ten players that could come in I think, but I think the real gist of what you're trying to say is that, they, that we had very good teams yeah, and there was no sort of superstar in the team. It's just very, very good teams. Yeah, I mean, and everybody worked well together. Yeah, there, there was, but you know, you you got some special players. I mean, Chris Kawami up front with his pace and goal scoring. You had um, Jason Dazelle, who was you know classy on the ball. You know. I'd like to think that I might improve the side if I was still young enough to yeah, play. Yeah, would you fancy playing you right back in this team? The side, you know, but I just think the team's in a fantastic position. I love going down to the ground and working mm. on match days to see the team play. So it's a fantastic. Okay, let's do some questions from our socials because we're running really, really uh, tight on time now. Um, this this is brilliant, and we've got a picture actually um, for this. Um, Paul has been in touch. And he asks, do you remember the time that you opened the bottle bank at the Golden Key Pub in Ipswich? Can you remember doing that? I mean, you obviously do a lot of player appearances. And if you can't remember, just look at the screen behind you. (laughs) And there you are at the opening. Which one one is he? That is one heck of a tracksuit. If you want to buy that tracksuit now, because Paul has tried to get that tracksuit, um, and that's him in the picture, the smaller one, um, that tracksuit now is it would cost you about three hundred quid. Um, so a lot that of the fell old... apart after two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember? Was that one of the highlights? Opening up a bottle bank. Yeah, I remember that day almost. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's great to see things like that, isn't it? Almost look a young lad there, don't I? It's Bless. Fantastic. Well, Paul sends his best. Yeah, I, thank you, Paul. Yeah, no, enjoyed that moment. Um, shuey has been in touch. Can I ask you why, when I got you round to do a quote for tiling in my bathroom, you never got back to him? <laughs> <laughs> Probably looked a tough job, I reckon. Um, another one here from Stevie B. Does Mickey remember when I came to service his Ford Sierra? As a mobile mechanic, yes. my dog Lennox went for him yes. when Mick put his hand through the van window. <laughs> yes, I can. It was, I thought it was a nice looking dog, but it soon changed my mind. I think he went on and did some refereeing, didn't he? The, he says, Can I also say, I was, al- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> can I also say, I was, a, I was a massive fan of Mickey. Every football club needs a 110% reliable, loyal player up, uh, and that was Mick. I remember him going up front and scoring against Wimbledon. Yeah. So a lot of people remembering that. Um, uh, ben Beefy Martin's been in touch. Who's the best player that you've played against and the best player that you've played with? Um, I know Butch is sitting next to me, but I'm going to... Don't gi- say me, for goodness no, sake. With I'm the gonna, exception I'm of gonna, Terry Butcher and Russell no, Osman over there, of No, course, I'm yeah. going to go with and Walkie. And I okay. spent a lot, long time playing with John Walk. Um, Walkie was just... Without knowing or being able to tell you how he did it, he was always in the right place. Just read the game and, and you know, playing centre-half in the Premier League at 105, he still managed to be, 
<laughs> still managed to be in the right place at the right time, even if he was screaming at me for running off and leaving him alone. But um, yeah, Walkie would definitely be yeah, the best player I've played. played. Uh, Giggs and John Barnes, I would say. Ryan Giggs and, and John Barnes were the yeah. best two I played against. Okay. Rattle through. Farmer Piles gets in touch. At one time as a player, you lived opposite my elderly parents in Warren Heath and saw them waiting at the bus stop. You pulled over and gave them a lift into town. Mum never forgot that. Simple, kind gesture for the rest of her years, and neither have I. A great player and a proper gentleman. She didn't, she didn't mention how much I charged her, did she? <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to say, did you ever fancy keeping the striker's role that John Lyle gave you temporarily at one point. You scored goals and I was gutted when he put you back in midfield or defence when our forwards got fit. Thank you, Stumper, he says. Yeah. Ah, yes, uh, Stumper. Stumper, yeah. Where's this story come from? Well, I, when I joined at 16, I, I was half-decent cricketer and uh, we had a, a charity match um, at Cop Dock and uh, I'd been batting for a little while and we were down to the last wicket and we were close to winning the game. And so Bobby came in and hit a few nice shots. And the, the script went that he should hit the winning run, being the, the legend that he was. But I danced down the wicket and got stumped before he could do it. And we were all <laughs> out. And I think uh, Eric Gates was standing there watching, laughing. And, and the nickname Stumper came out of it. So, <laughs> And it stuck. It stuck for a long time, to be fair. Here's yeah. the other story about the, the cricket game. that um, They played at Portman Road, played Essex at Portman Road pre-season. So Bobby Robson normally used to field in at first slip. He didn't much movement. He just went end to end. But he decided to field out on the square leg boundary. So uh, it might have been Graham Gooch or one of the Essex players came in and he hits the ball to the square leg and it's going, it's going over to be a six. And they're right in front of the dugouts and Bobby comes round and labours round and goes up and catches the ball and dives into the dugout <laughs> and he knocks himself out oh, and no. I think Clive Woods was, was was one of the fielders so Clive comes along and went he's out <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he left him in the dugout <laughs> he left him unconscious in the dugout can you remember that Russ? you all do yeah good days yeah. Yeah. Graham Gooch knocking the ball into the middle of the town centre from the the pitch on Portman Road Good squad of lads, yes, six boys had then. Ray East, obviously, and uh, John Lever, Fletcher. Yeah, good times. Happy and Mickey was a bit sharp off a short run, Mick, as well, weren't you? I, I used to be, yeah, not bad. Uh, yeah, for somebody at five quick. foot six, I wasn't too shoddy at getting it through now and again, but at the highest oh, level, they used to love it. They used to skid onto them and they smashed me all over the place. But yeah, I'm fiddling with my phone, which can mean only one thing. Uh, we've had the scores come through from uh, Man v Fat. Um, these are the chaps who are playing football to lose weight, okay? okay. And so they play football, and if they lose yeah, they weight... Want, do they want a, a sub? Well, oh, Mick, <laughs> you and I both could probably yeah, go yeah, there, yeah. bless you. That's a back two there. Uh, the, <laughs> oh, sorry, back, back four. four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is coming from, uh, from Mark's story. And uh, he says, I've sent you some uh, some of the scores from Colchester uh, for a change. Uh, and then we've got our usual ones. So Aston Griller, 13. Bayern Munchies, 24. Gimme My Dodgers, 9. Sorry, no, Jim My Dodgers, as in Jammy Dodgers. Jim My Dodgers, Jammy Dodgers. Okay, it doesn't yeah, really work. Move on, yeah, anyway, on. 9. Uh, old and Pathetic, 8. <laughs> I love this. Borussia Moobs and Backfat, <laughs> 19. Borussia Donuts, 5. Uh, team name of the week is uh, Rotunderland, who play at the Stadium of Bite. And player of the week is Luke Wolfitdown. <laughs> Love it. These are the scores from our usual league. Man Titty, 6. <laughs> LA Galaxy Bar, 10. Oh, no. Toulouse, a few pounds, 9. Seattle Quarter Pounders, 11. And Pork Vale 3, Far From Athletic 5. Yay! Well done, the man fee fat scorers. Mark, I think Man City better get a grip of themselves. They do, yes. Yay. Yes, they do. <laughs> Phil, we've got a present. We have a present, yes. I have to unfurl this on my own. Uh, from the, get Ted uh, Lasso to hold it for you. No, he's not going to do that. Um, this is from the uh, American supporters uh, and uh, Eric PZ. 
um, he saw the show the other week and said, oh, I've, you've got a few scarves around there, but no, none from the, uh, I'm trying to work, uh, North American Supporters Club. That's the, uh, the NASC as opposed to the NASL. Um, and uh, yes, he sent us a, a scarf, which we will drape around the room presently. Fantastic. PZ uh, used to live out in East Suffolk, where uh, me and Terry lived. Uh, someone who was We've got some uh, of our North American supporters coming over in the next few weeks because they're coming for games. They're going to come to the show. Uh, where's our Spanish supporter? Come on, come on the microphone. What, quickly, quickly. What's it, you watch the show in Spain? Yeah, I watch the show on YouTube every week. So yep. I've seen the last four already. And uh, I've encouraged my nephews who are Spanish, who are big Atletico Madrid fans, who now have Ipswich shirts and text Excellent. me every weekend, what's the score, what's happening, and watching all the time. Brilliant. Yay. That's how it grows, isn't it? That's how it grows. Uh, Russ, a quick word about being in Australia at the moment, the Lionesses, before you go. Uh, what's been the atmosphere down in uh, in Australia? Poor Matildas, bless them, the Tillies. Bless them. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Lionesses were fantastic the other night. A um, little bit uncomfortable being the only English people in a pub full of uh, Australians who were cheering the Matildas on. Um, but you I loved think it. Matildas have done They've done a fantastic job to to get the girls interested in football again out here, and it has gone absolutely ballistic over the last few weeks. So, been coverage all over the place, uh, extremely well supported. But I think the Lionesses just showed that they are at a different level at the moment. They're very very strong. They play some good football, and it's going to be a cracking final. Yep, and we're going to win, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. fantastic. We're uh, that's are. it. We're out of time. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Actually, we're over time. Uh, thank you very much. Mick Stockwell. Wasn't there a song earlier? <laughs> one Mickey Stockwell. One Mickey Stockwell. You just have to, you just have to start it off yourself before. <laughs> well. uh, next week, we'll be joined by former town chairman David Sheepshanks, uh, who will have a story or two to tell with but us uh, get next the, week. The nice china and crockery out for him. We will, yeah, we will. No, no, no bottles of beer for him no, next no, week, no. I don't think, anyway. Uh, to keep in touch with us, check out our socials, Lives to Pitch Socials, Facebook, Insta, and Twitter. On YouTube, make sure, please, 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 that you subscribe. We need to subscribe, everybody, don't we? And yeah. smash the like button, please. Let's get to 5,000. Uh, thanks again to our main sponsors, DPS Tech. We're also supported by Green King, All About Hearing, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, the Hudson Group, Sound4 Pro Audio, and our new sponsors, uh, Ginger Pickle as well. Thank you, Capacity Crowd. Yay! Thank you to you for watching, and we'll be back at the same time next week. Have a great week, and up the town, everybody! Up the town.